last round in the Motor City was mass destruction in Detroit. No! The track at Ford Field became a wasteland for some of the best drivers in the sport. It's over! But through the carnage, the Guinness World Record holder went full throttle through the bracket, and a former world champion soared to new heights in a city she calls her second home. But it was the rise of an independent who rode the ragged edge to championship glory. This is Stadium Championship Series Red. This is round 15. This is Monster Jam. Welcome to Motown USA, Detroit, Michigan, for round 15 of the 2022 Monster Jam season. Today, another great crowd is on hand on a brisk day in downtown Detroit for Stadium Championship Series Red. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Ford Field. I'm Scott Jordan, joined once again by Colt Stevens. Last round was just wall-to-wall -wall action. Bryce Kenny won his first racing competition of the season. Cynthia Gautier won freestyle in front of her friends and family. And Cole Venard finally hit the walk the plank and took the first overall event championship of the year but Colt with all those great moments what stood out to you yeah I'm gonna have to say Cole Venard absolutely throwing it down in freestyle and getting that walk to plank that's such a hard move to pull off Cole did it flawlessly and had a great freestyle speaking of freestyle both Adam Anderson and Tom Mentz did not complete the first 30 seconds of their run so neither got a score which is unprecedented and that allowed Todd LaDuke to step into the points chase now let's take a look at the driver lineup for Stadium Championship Series Red. A change in round 15. Ryan Disharoon is out of Saigon Shaker. Ricky only is in. What can you tell us about Ricky? You know, I've known Ricky for a long time. He's been a crew guy. He's worked on some of our trucks. But you know what? What's crazy is Rick and Ryan both hired him on actually just to drive the rig from city to city. But to get this opportunity to get inside the truck and go to the big leagues and play with the big boys, it's going to be awesome. Let's update you on the current season point standings. Tom Men still has the lead. I mentioned Tom LaDuke now trailing by 10. And and Adam Anderson just 16 off the pace. Covenard and Bryce Kenny round out the top five. But Cynthia Gautier, a big riser. She is now up to seven at 178 points. And last round, Lucas Stabilizer, Cynthia Gautier brought the house down in freestyle. And she is on the track right now. So let's join the 2019 World Finals High Jump Champion and her own Leslie Mears with this UNOH pit report. Leslie. You are just one of a few competitors on this tour to win multiple freestyles. And how significant is that when you're looking at this field of drivers? It means so much with that brand new Lucas stabilizer. I had a lot of pressure because all their products, it's a lot of performance. So I want to be performance. I want to be on top of the game, especially with all those boys. They're really good. The fans are supporting me no matter what truck I'm driving. So it means a lot. And guys, she's going to try to continue this rip and see if she can pick up her third freestyle tonight. Thank you, Cynthia. Good luck tonight. Let's just keep you here for a minute. A lot of truck damage last round. What can you tell us as far as the status of our Monster Jam competitors? Yeah, guys, Colvinard broke a spindle. We saw Mark List go out there and get a four-link bar. Some drive shaft damage as well as some shocks. Todd LaDuke basically ripped up one corner of the truck, took out the shock tower as well as a four-link bar. We saw Tom Mentz lose the cap off of one of his shocks. And probably the oddest damage of the night came from Adam Anderson. And right here, I've got the cap on the kingpin. And you can see in the middle, here that this piece is sheared off. This is the piece that goes down into the knuckle, into the bearing, and keeps that tire solid on that corner. And what had happened, his first jump, it just sheared right off. And that's why we saw that back right tire be very, very wobbly. Thank you, Leslie. So, Cole, let's go to track talk. And, and carnage isn't even a word to really describe what we witnessed last round and what was left on the track here at Ford Field. Uh, it's a rocky track, both figuratively and literally. So how did drivers react and rebound for today? You know, I noticed the track changed a lot yesterday in racing, Scott. As it, they went around making race laps, the rocks kind of moved out to the outside, making marbles. And the track got very slick. Drivers had to overcome that quickly. They were actually able to pitch the truck in and drift it around the corners. But that same time, there was some holes starting to form and the truck started hiking up and they were missing the race lane. So the drivers are gonna have to pay attention to that and figure this track out fast if they want to win. 
Let's take a look at the event breakdown for round 15. Our drivers will compete in three competitions, racing the Great Clip Skills Challenge and Freestyle. Points are awarded based on finish. 12 points go to the winner, and it goes down from there. And of course, the driver with the most points at the end of the event is crowned your overall event champion. Now let's take a look at the racing bracket. In round one, Saigon Shaker meets Lucas Stabilizer. El Toro Loco goes up against Overboard. Jester against Bad Company. And Black Pearl versus Kraken. In round two, Grave Digger, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior, Blue Thunder, and Matt. D getting the first round by so I like round two here you get the top three at the point standings and Bryce Kenny coming off his first racing win this is some very important racing on this bracket here because you got Tom Mintz and Todd LaDuke on the same side some valuable points could be made in racing well, let's not waste any time. Let's get down to the track for round one of racing. Lucas Stabilizer, Cynthia Gautier in the gray lane. And then Saigon Shaker, Ricky Only in the red lane. So Ricky Only doesn't get a whole lot of time uh, on the sideline to watch this thing play out. He gets right up here in round one. All right, here we go. Ricky Only, great jump at the start. Yeah, Ricky, truck settles down good. Cynthia, great corner. Ricky's deep. We go to the halfway point. Ricky has the lead at the halfway point, but he gets off the ramp. Got a little too excited there. <laughs> so Cynthia Gautier, she comes off. She didn't get the wheels off. Oh, my gosh. She did not get the front two BKT tires. It looked like across the ramp. Take a look at the replay. Watch Ricky come out of this corner here on the red lane. The front of that truck dips hard. Gets is a weird bounce, and Ricky is not able to gather it back up. He wins. So Cynthia Gautier gets the penalty, and Ricky only in his first race back will move on to round two. Wow. Yes. Oh, dude, what a story. Next up in round one, Jamie Garner and overboard against Mark List and El Toro Loco. Off the jump, El Toro Loco hits the chalk first through the first turn. Great corner by Mark. Now Mark List extends his lead. Overboard's got to catch up here. Final turn we go. Oh, that's close. Jamie caught up. Let's take a look at Super Glue Glue to the action replay. It is El Toro Loco. So Mark List picks up the win. Our next matchup in round one, it is Aaron Kane and Jester against John Gordon and Bad Company. John uses no rear steer going into that corner, just kind of slings it in. Takes a great lane, comes out a little oh. wide. Jester, all kinds of problems, still going. Jester's all over the place. And John Gordon going to make this one look easy. So Bad Company whips it across the finish line. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. Watch as John goes into this first corner. You can see he doesn't really use the rear steer at all. Slings that truck in, tries to use the drift method. It works on this round right here. But I think if he continues to do that, it's going to be slow. Our final matchup here in round one, Colvin Arn and the Black Pearl up against Nick Pagliarulo and Kraken. Nick Pagliarulo having all kinds of problems off the line. Looked very slow on the jump. Watch him come over this red race lane. Nice and low. Checks up. And Smooth. Nick, all kinds of issues. He's going to go wide. Skids out. And Cole Nard is going to get a big win. He brings it back inside. Ooh, getting a little hairy there, Cole. So the, the track is definitely getting slick. Now let's take a look at a racing bracket moving into round two. It's going to be Grave Digger up against Saigon Shaker. Great Clips Mohawk Warrior against El Toro Loco. Blue Thunder going head to head with Bad Company. And Max D up against Black Pearl. Round one is ancient history. Round two is on deck. Can Bryce Kenny make it two in a row? The Great Clips Mohawk Warrior gets in on the action when Monster Jam returns. Welcome back to Ford Field for round two of Monster Jam Racing. In our first matchup, Adam Anderson in Grave Digger up against Ricky Only in Saigon Shaker. Off the start we go. Grave Digger, great start in the red lane. Ricky's a little deep, no rear steer whatsoever. Adam definitely has the advantage right now. Ricky's all over the place. All over, clips the jammer. Hey, he got his front wheels across the jump, but he jumped the jammer. And Adam Anderson going to take the win. So Ricky only, maybe the nerves, maybe the cobwebs, the dust coming into effect here. But Adam Anderson goes into the semifinals. Up next in round two, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. He pulls up to the red lane. And his opponent, Mark List and El Toro Loco in the gray lane. And into the first turn, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior with the lead. Bryce nails that last corner, almost hikes up, but fully committed. 
But it's not enough. El Toro Loco has the lead. Mark Liss caught up in that turn. Now he has to hit the brakes. Uh oh, he's going to miss it. He is done. Oh my goodness, what a turn of events. Take a look at the super glue, glue to the action replay. It looked like he just stopped. Yeah, Mark Liss had the advantage coming around that gray lane right here. Then all of a sudden he comes to that last corner. And it's like his rear steer wasn't working or something. He did not even get close to getting across the race lane. Almost had to come to a complete stop. Our next matchup, Todd Leduc in Blue Thunder against John Gordon in Bad Company. As Todd and John pull to the line, let's send it downstairs to Leslie Mears. And guys, Todd Leduc told me that he's not stressing about those points. He knows the pressure's on, but he's just trying to throw it down round by round and do his thing to gain them as he goes without thinking about them. Into the turn, John Gordon has the lead, but here comes Todd Leduc on two wheels. When he gets it back down, he's got the lead, and John goes wild. Oh, Gordon makes a mistake now. Now Todd's got to pull on the Jets. John again on a crazy lane. Oh, Gordon hits a turn pod. Easy win. Wow, look at John. Send it. Flying across the finish line, but Todd the going to win. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. I didn't know who was going to get it, but the deciding factor is when John Gordon came across, again, this gray lane, that exit, John hits a turn pod and jacks him up for going across the race lane. And our final round two matchup, Tom Mentz and Max D against Colvin Ard in the Black Pearl. Colvin Ard lightning fast though all weekend, and here we go halfway through. Tom catches a bad bounce. He's got it back though. Here we go. He hits the he hits the pod. Cole. Oh, oh man, look at that finish. I don't know what happened on the finish. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. I thought Cole had it the whole way, but Tom did not quit and drove right through that finish line for the win. Let's take a look at our semifinal bracket. Adam Anderson, Grave Digger going up against Bryce Kenny, Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior. And on the other side, Todd LaDuke in Blue Thunder up against Tom Mintz in Max D. So we have our top three in the points plus last round's winner. Up first in the semis, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior against Adam Manderson, a Grave Digger. And Bryce gets lane choice and takes the red lane where he won the racing competition last round. Great move. Into the turn we go. Adam Anderson absolutely flooring the truck Adam right now. picked up speed going into that corner. Do you see him check up right there coming across the red race lane? Again, he's picking up speed, nailing the throttle going into the corner. And Bryce Kenny hit the pod. A huge win. My goodness. Oh, man. Adam Anderson just leveled Bryce Kenny in this. Runs a bad, fast time right there. Our final matchup here in the semifinal round, Todd the Duke and Blue Thunder. Tom Mentz, Max D, Todd takes the red lane, Tom in the gray lane, this is huge. And it is Blue Thunder with the lead into the first turn. Tom uses no rear steer, kind of apexes that corner, but it looks and like it's bad he, fast. He's got the lead and Todd comes off on two wheels, he's got to turn it up, he goes wide. Here comes Max D to the finish, oh! and it's Blue Thunder. Hey. <laughs> What a finish! Todd is hanging it out right there. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. Watch Tom as he goes into the corners using no rear steer, and it looked like a fast way to get around the track. Unfortunately, on that last corner on the gray side, he has to check up in order to get square for the race lane, and that cost him. Todd comes away with the win. And we are down to the final two in the bracket. Who's going to get the first 12 points of the day? It's Anderson versus LeDuc, and it's next on Monster Jam. Welcome back to the Motor City where we have reached the racing final and this one is going to be epic. Todd LaDuke up against Adam Anderson in the final round. Winner gets the first 12 points. These two have met in their careers 40 times in stadium round racing. Adam Anderson 22 and 18 against his rival Todd LaDuke. Adam is up on that converter, ready to get after it. And Grave Digger has the advantage into the turn, but he spins oh, up. Oh, he slings it in too hard, Scott. It's over. And Tom the Duke is foaming at the mouth on the other side of the track. Exactly what I was talking about cost Adam. But Tom the Duke is going to win it. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. Absolutely slams that truck into that corner. He knows as soon as he hits that throttle, that truck is gone. Over rotate, spins out, easy win for Todd LaDuke. What a wild finish of the racing bracket. Todd LaDuke gets a much needed win, and he is on the track with Leslie Mears. Leslie. Todd, you were able to run your own race there and just keep working your way through the bracket, but I heard you talking to Gio. Is there an issue with the truck? Yeah, just in that final round, man, you're always super nervous about, like, you know, the truck's shaking or you feel something weird in this, right? You know, this season just now is so plagued with, with uh, fatigue and it's just like a constant 
shadow. You can't get rid of it, you know? So I thought I felt the transmission slipping a little bit. The truck felt a little weird, but in skills, I'm gonna have to play it smart, not get on the gas hard and keep momentum, and uh, we should ho hopefully get out of there with a win. Guys still driving with hard, just changing up the strategy a little bit to try to gain. Thank you, Leslie. So Todd getting 12 points here as we take a look at the BKT overall event leaderboard after racing. Todd in the top spot, Adam Anderson with 11, Tom Mintz with 10, Bryce Kenny with nine, and Cole Bernard with eight points. Next up in Detroit was the Great Clip Skills Challenge. In this competition, drivers could attempt two technical maneuvers on two wheels or opt to do a donut. They were judged by fans in attendance on creativity, skill, and execution. With 12 points up for grabs, let's take a look back at our top three drivers. Coming to third place, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior with the stoppy moonwalk nose wheelie combo across the step up. Rides it for a little bit, pops in reverse, goes over the top of the step up and then throws a little extra on top. Doing a wheelie on the backside for a combo move. In second, Covenar Black Pearl with a big reverse popper. Pops it up just right, sets it down the rear bumper, pops it into first, riding across the pod. Comes down hard on that front end, going for a stoppy. And check out the winning run from the 12-time World Finals champion, Max D's Tom Mintz. Goes into the maximum moonwalk, rotates up on the two front tires. Doesn't even touch the front hood, getting very close. Great control, knows exactly where he's at. And after his fifth win in the Great Clip Skills Challenge, Leslie Mears caught up with Tom Mintz. Tom, so critical that you pick up this win here as it's, it's coming down to the wire here before the break. And so, you know, how are you going to carry this momentum forward? It's very critical, you know. You go out there, all the pressure's on you. It's on the other drivers as well. You just can't mess up, you know. Every single point counts. We need everyone we can get. we got to keep up the momentum, keep going. We want to win the championship. Because he's definitely on a mission here. Thank you, Leslie. Now let's check out the BKT overall event leaderboard after two competitions. Tom Mentz jumps to the top of 22. Colvinar with 19. Bryce Kenny with 19. Adam Anderson with 17. John Gordon and Bad Company in 16. And after the top five, look at Tom the Duke, 15 points. And that is our current BKT overall event leaderboard. Two competitions in the books, one more to go. Up next, Colt and I recap the first half here and take a look around the league when Monster Jam returns with our St. Jude Halftime Report. Everyone at Monster Jam is proud to be partners with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Become a partner in hope and receive a custom St. Jude Monster Jam This Shirt Saves Lives t-shirt. Text Monster Jam to 785-833 or visit stjude.org forward slash Monster Jam to learn more. We are at the home of the Detroit Lions Ford Field in Michigan for round 15 of the 2022 Monster Jam season. I'm Scott Jordan alongside Cole Stevens. Todd LaDuke starts today in a big way, winning racing. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, the wild card is the Great Clip Skills Challenge. Todd could not get much of anything done because he couldn't push the transmission and Tom Mintz takes advantage. Yeah, we've always said that skills can make you or break you. And in this situation, it's been breaking a lot of drivers. What has been going wrong for Gravedigger this weekend? You know, I think Adam might be trying too hard. He really wants to bury the competition as he always says and unfortunately it's really biting him here in Detroit. Well let's hear from the five-time world finals champion. He is downstairs with Leslie Mears in this UNOH halftime pit report. So Adam a tough row to hoe here for you. What is your team up against? Man you know it's really tough and we're hoping that we only got just the planetary. I really don't know and um, that's what we're hoping for but no matter what we're going back out there. I can't deal with this anymore. Uh, it's becoming really stressful now. Normally I'm pretty easy going having some fun out there, but I'm not having fun right now, and I'm ready to get back out on the track. I gotta prove something out there. Jeff is awesome, he works his butt off, and uh, everything's fighting us. The trucks are getting tired, season's getting, we're getting deep into the season, but I'm done with this, and I'm ready to light it up. Thank you, Leslie. So let's take a look around the league. Big weekend in Monster Jam. A lot of events going on. Allentown, Pennsylvania, Arena Championship Series East. Weston Anderson has taken two out of three event championships. Cole, if he wins this series, could this be the best rookie season in Monster Jam history? I can say this, Scott. I really haven't seen anybody come in there rookie year and win as much as Weston has against such a stacked lineup as well. In Wichita, Kansas, Arena Championship Series West, David Olford wins racing and freestyle on Saturday night. And Jurassic Attack gets the event championship. So it's been all about Vince in England in that series, but Colt, you cannot sleep on too tall. He can flat out drive. Oh, absolutely. He's definitely standing tall here today. In Rosemont, Illinois, we're in the Championship Series Central. Elvis Linus gets the win on Saturday night in El Toro Loco, and now Kristen Anderson's lead in that series, single digits. You know, Colt, Elvis has been one of the fastest rising stars in the sport. You know, Elvis was having a lot of issues with the truck. Seems like he's got that behind him, and he might be chipping away at that lead. On Saturday night in Anaheim, Ryan Anderson wins racing. 
Ryan Anderson wins the Great Clip Skills Challenge. Ryan Anderson wins freestyle. Ryan Anderson wins the event championship. You know, Brandon Vincent's having a great year, but I don't know that anybody in Monster Jam is better right now than Ryan Anderson. <laughs> the question is, is who's gonna stop him? Well, let's talk about Stadium Championship Series Red here in Detroit. Tom Mentz has the lead with 22 points. Cole Benar, Bryce Kenny with 19 apiece. Adam Anderson with 17. John Gordon with 16. Todd LaDuke with 15. It is gonna make freestyle very, very interesting. We just heard from Adam Anderson, and he is one of the biggest and best superstars in the sport. And when he finally decides to hang it up, he's going to go down as one of the all-time greats. Now, back in Tampa, I had the chance to sit down and go one-on-one -on -one with the five-time World Finals champion. We talked about his season, his career, and his legacy. Take a look. There are many fans and drivers and, and crew members alike that think that you are the greatest of all time. So when you look at what you've done over your career in the sport, possibly winding things down after 17 years, is that something you think about at all? And you think you're just gonna keep going, uh, as you say, until the truck doesn't run anymore? It's really hard to say. If I go out, I don't wanna go out down at the bottom. I wanna stay on top. It's hard to do that now. It used to be a lot easier to be the guy on top when there wasn't as many competitors on the track that could compete at this level. I'm gonna have to retire someday because I can't do this forever. I don't think I'll make it as long as my dad did, but I'm fortunate enough that he paved the way for us to maybe be in the position that I don't really have to. Tom is still pushing it, you know? That, that old dude is tough, and uh, I really cannot believe he is still doing it and doing what he does. But I look up to that guy, but at the same time, I'd like to be able to bring my family to an event, or potentially watch my family at an event. Fans worldwide know the legacy that your dad has left behind after creating Grave Digger and driving for so long at such a dominant level. What do you think your legacy in Monster Jam is? I can't say, I'm, I'm not definitely not the first, second generation driver. Grave Digger name is the most well-known name within Monster Jam. We already have third generation fans coming to these events. I've created those memories for those people and uh, it, it's, it, it hits you in the heart sometimes. So let's talk about your siblings for a minute. You know, you watched your brother Ryan debut in the sport. You watched Kristen debut. Now you've got to see your, your youngest brother Weston come in and debut in Grave Digger. So when you see Weston driving, uh, I know we all expected it. Is it still something that's pretty special for you to see? Ryan and I were a little bit closer in age, so I didn't mess with him as much. And then my sister, when she first started, Kristen, I was nervous wreck, man. There's a lot of critics on the track, off the track, and I was worried about that. Not necessarily as worried about that with Weston because he did have prior experience. I didn't really know who he was gonna be as a driver in the truck. I knew he could do it. He wants to work his way up. He's not trying to get to the top right now, but he's already so close that it's gonna be easy for him to obtain. Adam, thanks so much, man. I appreciate <laughs> Thank you. it. Thanks, Scott. Cole, you and Adam have gotten really close over the years. What kind of impact has he had on your career? You know, we're both second generation drivers. We grew up watching our dads race together and us having the opportunity to race together has been great as well. One thing I can say about Adam is he's definitely here to help anyone. But the other side of that is Adam's here to beat everyone as well. When we come back, the second half begins with what is sure to be an epic freestyle competition. So buckle up. We'll be right back with more Monster Jam. Welcome back to Detroit Rock City for the second half of Monster Jam. One of the advantages of winning freestyle is that the winning driver gets to pick where they go in the order in the next round. And Cole, you and I have talked about this in, in the past, but can you break down what goes into that decision? You know, a lot of it comes down to the backflip. Being the first one to perform a backflip usually gets you a higher score. So you try and pick a spot in there that you can go out there and do a flip and get potentially the highest score of the night, no matter what your run is. Let's go down to the track for the start of freestyle. First up in freestyle is Aaron Kane in Jester. Oh no, oh, he's oh no, that was close, I Scott. he was gonna roll over. We saw a lot of rollovers uh, and a lot of carnage last round here in Detroit. So we will see if the track does the same thing. Look at Aaron Kane getting nice some air. big air right there. Air right there, I love that. Kind of tiptoeing through the center a little bit. Don't blame him though, there's a lot of trip hazards in there. Oh, I'll do a little rock crawling. Hey, why not climb up the container? Yeah. See how far this truck can flex out. Prior to coming back to Monster Jam and Jester, Aaron Kane had been known for driving quad chaos. Has driven Jester in the past, filling in for Matt Pagliarulo, who is home in Florida this weekend. All right, good opportunity to catch it. Oh, doesn't use it. Had a good opportunity to go for a stoppy right there. 
I'm going to have to step up. I like the air we're getting from Aaron Kane. Ooh. Air Aaron Kane. That's a new name. Copyrighted, Colt. He's airing it out, Aaron Kane. Air in Kane. Up to the step up goes Jester. Break check, gets it back down. Body starting to peel off. I wonder if something's going on here. He's kind of checking up if something might have hurt him a little bit. Is he going to backflip? No I think way. he's going to backflip. Okay, no, oh, he's no. going to do not. He's going to donut. He's going to donut. All right. Holy cow, he's spinning a hole now. 7.361. Up next in freestyle out of Hiram, Georgia, John Gordon in bad company. John Gordon going to send it across the backside of the step up. Oh, yeah. And then right on the landing, keeps the momentum. Picking that inside uh, tire up, going around that corner. Having some fun, Scott. That's the main thing about it. You can really tell when a driver's having fun out there driving like that. You know, there are uh, worse things in life to do, Cole, for a living than drive a monster truck, that's for sure. Especially in Monster Jam, one of the biggest sports in the world. It's the best job in the world, Scott. John Gordon, brake check, comes down a little awkward, is able to square it up and land it. He is still now on a roll. I love that jump there across the pod. Truck's leaning a little bit. I don't know if he's having a shock issue. Sway bar might be just a little tweaked. Oh, it comes off a little wobbly, is able to get it. John Gordon, a world champion crew chief with Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, back in Vegas at Sam Boyd Stadium. Big moment for John. And then he moved into a truck and now driving like a, a ragged edge grave digger Throwing style. Slap Willie. Throwing some technical moves in there on that freestyle. Eight pack backflip. I guarantee it here, Scott. Yeah, he is going to line this thing up for the oh, eight pack. Oh, crooked eight pack. He, he don't care. He doesn't even line up. Oh, for he it. gains it over and just flips it oh, sideways. Oh, man. He came in really awkward at a weird angle. Why would you do that? That was reckless, Scott, honestly. 9.108. That's why he did it. Take a look at the super glue, glue to the action replay. Goes for the eight pack backflip. As you can tell though, it doesn't line up whatsoever. It's like he doesn't care. He's just gonna hit it. Does a crazy corkscrew maneuver. Spin all out of control right down on that left side. As Tom Mance hits the track, let's get an update on Max D. Leslie. Guys, Tom told me that the bar is going to be set high for his run in freestyle because of the competition tonight. And so he knows he's going to have to keep it on the tires for two minutes and go hard like always. Thank you, Leslie. Well, Tom now has a 17-point cushion coming into freestyle when it comes to the series points. There he goes. Goes into the Maximal Mayor Moonwalk. Maximum moonwalk across the red race lane. Now Tom Mance heating it back up. It's so crazy to watch this truck lean because of the coilover shocks on it. it. Doesn't have any sway bars. You always hear us talking about sway bars being truck, making trucks lean, but watch whenever he goes in the corners. There are no sway bars, so the truck leans all the way over. It's actually held up by coil springs. Huge air right here. It's gonna kick hard. Yes, sir. Oh, drive, 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 He's drive. got the save. Yes, Tom Mintz over the car stack, landed awkwardly on that big berm jammer. So much patience. Your natural reaction is to hammer that throttle. Tom takes a nice little breather right there, lets the truck settle, and then drives right out of it. Now he's going to line up for the container backflip. Here we go, Max D going to sky early. it. 43 seconds still on the clock. And he's got it. Comes around perfectly. Now it's time to let her eat, buddy. Go, go, huge! Big air, Tom Mance sends it across the pod, and he's going to end up on the lid, but what a run. That is what you do to win freestyle. That is what you do to win a series championship. Take a look at the super glue, glued to the action replay. He just fell from the heavens, Scott. He goes into the backflip early, perfect backflip here. Catches a weird rebound into container, doesn't face him, drives out of it and goes right into this huge air off of the jammer all the way to the moon, back down, crazy bounce. Lands on the roof, but it doesn't matter. Huge score for Tom Mintz. Here comes the 2019 World Finals High Jump Champion. 
Cynthia Gautier, Lucas Stabilizer. When you talk about the most popular drivers in the sport, I don't think anybody would argue that Cynthia Gautier's name would be at the top of that list. Cynthia has stepped her game up tremendously this year, absolutely throwing it down in this Lucas Stabilizer truck. You know, I think she's changed her whole driving style, but I think it's 100% been for the better right here. Going for a slap, really. She's really been throwing these down here lately. Unfortunately, catches a bad bounce. Not able to keep the truck up on his two rear tires long enough. So she goes from outside to in. She starts on the race lanes, then goes inside. Jammer to the step up. Got to kind of thread the needle down there. There's lots of carnage of trucks sitting down there in that far corner. Step up. Checks up just right. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, oh saves it. She really jammed that truck in there, landing hard on the pod, catching a rebound. Great job being patient, not overdriving the truck, letting it settle before making a decision on how to save it. Going to the World Finals coming up in, in May, Cynthia may have an opportunity to defend her high jump championship. That would be incredibly cool for her to get that chance to defend her title as she keeps slinging it here in Detroit. Nice air. She is doing a great drive, Scott. She's using up all the track so far. Oh, it's jamming in there Oh, again. Sky Willie, she's going to go in the lid. A little bit short there. Cost her. Truck rebounded hard, almost flipping over onto its roof completely. Luckily, she landed on the bumper just a little bit. Not everybody was able to even make it out on the track tonight or get a score. Let's take a look at some of our lower performing scores. Saigon Shaker didn't even get out on the track. Kraken had a flat tire. Mark List, El Toro Loco with electrical issues. Adam Anderson in Grave Digger. He broke a housing. And Jamie Garner in Overboard stopped with 20 seconds left on the clock. Let's take a look at our current freestyle top five. Tom Metz, Max D with the lead. John Gordon, Bad Company in second. Cynthia Gauthier, Lucas Stabilizer in third. Aaron Kane and Jester fourth, and Jamie Garner and Overboard rounding out our current freestyle top five. We are not quite done yet. Stay right where you are. More high-flying full throttle action is on the way as freestyle continues next. Welcome back to Detroit. Before we get back to the action, let's take a look at our current BKT overall event leaderboard coming into freestyle. Tom Mentz at the top with 22 points. Kovinar, Bryce Kenny with 19 apiece. Adam Anderson with 17. John Gordon, 16. And Todd the Duke with 15 points. Let's get back to the track as Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior, now takes center stage. And now comes off the back side of the step up on the gray race side of the track. Bringing it back over as so he goes outside in. We saw Cynthia Gautier do this. He takes a turn right over the paw. So a little bit of a different strategy for Bryce Kenny. I like this jump here, clearing the pod. Oh, crazy bounce. Ends up getting the save. And turned into it a little early there. You gotta be careful sometimes it'll tweak the four link bar. Slap wheelie. Nice execution. 2020 Bryce Kenny competed on Stadium Championship Series Red. In 2021, he was one of the 12 competitors competing on Stadium Championship Series. And now back on the red side, after spending a few years in arenas driving Monster Mutt, Bryce Kenny now the face of Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior. Did the old one-two shift to get enough speed in order to thread the needle down there. Man, that was a big jump. He had to shift it from first to second, get enough power to jump to the pod. Then he had to thread the needle through, through the center. Bryce going to flip it around. He's going to line up now for the backflip ramp. Here goes Bryce Kenny. 25 seconds. Up to the ramp he goes. He gets a little too much and a broken tie rod on the back rear. That backflip took out the tie bar. Take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. Great job jumping across the center pad here. Sets up for a sweet slap wheelie. Rises across the floor. Goes into a backflip. Over rotates. Lands hard on that rear end. When you land that hard on the rear end, it cannot sustain that much weight, and it broke the tie rod, ending his run early. 
Todd LaDuke onto the track. Let's check back in with Leslie. What you got on Blue Thunder? Guys, Todd's keeping an awesome attitude, just kind of laughing it up in the truck, even though he faces adversity. After two-wheel skills, they actually drain half the fluid out of the transmission because it's starting to go bad. Put fresh Lucas transmission fluid in there, hoping that it would give it enough friction to hold it together during his freestyle run. Thank you, Leslie. So Todd's had to battle some truck issues that ultimately cost him cold some points in the series after the Great Clip Skills Challenge. So how do you rebound here? And that's a hard one, Scotty. You really need that transmission. You need all the power you can get, especially on a track like this, where you got to be able to come wide and get enough speed to jump big across the center. Because coming up short, we saw it happen to Cynthia. It'll put you on your lid quick. Nice brake check, dude. That was sweet. Set that up perfectly, landed the downside, let off the brakes just in the nick of time. Over the car stack. He's uh -oh. going to come off the side right by the single log. And he's able to get it straight and land it. Bryce Kenny's buried over there on one side of the container. So to do a backflip, it's got to be the eight pack of the far side of the track. I think Todd's doing good here. I think he's got enough time ticked off the clock. It's time for him to start letting her eat and kind of risking it, risking losing that transmission. There we go. Todd trails Tom Mintz by 17 points in the series points chase. And Tom adds, actually has the freestyle lead. We have not seen Todd attempt a normal backflip in a while. It's the first one I've seen out of him in, in quite some time. He usually goes to pack, but nails it. Now it's time to go. Risk it, Todd, risk it. Here's your wow moment there. It's a LeDuc leap, and he nails it. Huge. Yes, sir, and he lands it. Absolutely ginormous to the moon. All right, spin it around. Come on, Todd, go, 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 go. Straight up, vertical side wheelie, and he's cross-threading now. Yes, sir, go. All over the chammer to the gray side chammer. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Scott. That's driving, buddy. Todd Duke, what a run. That is a statement. Todd had to come back and get it done, and he did. Colt, take us through the super glue, glue to the action replay. After the backflip, it was on. Huge air. You see him just absolutely send that truck right there off the jammer to the moon. Lands it, continues driving, spins the truck around here, and then this is what's cool to me. Sends it across. All cattywamp is coming towards the center, getting the truck all upset, driving the wheels off of that thing. 9.785, new leader, Todd LaDuke. Up next in freestyle, Cole Bernard in Black Pearl. Let's send it back downstairs to Leslie Mears. Guys, probably the most unique perspective ever came from Cole on how to master this track. He said, with the jumps sending you up instead of out because it's a little shorter, he said, you have to drive like an angry teenager to do well in freestyle. Thank you, Leslie. Or you have to drive like I drive you to the airport, right? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about that. Inside out on the red jammer. Crosses it up on the back side of the step up. Gets some nice air. That leaves him a lot of room to fling the truck back around. And he takes the Bryce Kenny turn inside, right into that thread of the needle over the pod. Had to slow down just a little bit. I think he was a bit close to the wall on the far side of the track. He's got a rear steer issue, Scott. Oh, rear steer, okay. We saw him last round, Colt, absolutely nail the walk, the plank. Can he do it again here today? Now lining up for the backflip ramp. Here comes Colvinard. Nails it. Doesn't quite get the bounce, but he did nail the backflip right. That left rear wheel is super bent. Could possibly be coming apart. It's time to let it eat here, buddy. Sends it across through the pod. Still has 16 seconds. A oh, piece of the front of the truck just came off. Now crossing it up over the side of the step up. Yeah, my man. And there goes the wheel. All the way across the track. What a run for Cole as well. Let's take a look at the super glue glue to the action replay. Absolutely nails the backflip. Cole comes out time to send it across the center here. 
Tries to come up with something different, goes towards the step up. Huge hit off the step up from the side. Unfortunately, that left rear wheel just would not hang on any longer. Let's take a look at our freestyle top five. Tyler Duke Blue Thunder, incredible run. He's gonna win this competition in second place. Tom Mentz in Max D. Coming in third, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior in fourth, John Gordon in Bad Company. And in fifth place, rounding out your top five, it is Cole Bernard in the Black Pearl. But right now, Leslie Mears is down on the track with her freestyle winner, Blue Thunder's Todd LaDuke. Todd, you really had to dig deep to pull out that freestyle, Victor, after you saw what Tom laid down, you know. How were you able to find it out there? You know what sparked it was getting 10th in skills and Tom winning. I just got fired up. And, uh, you know, this Blue Thunder truck, the transmission was slipping. I'm going to be honest with you. I had to limp around until that 90 seconds. And then after that, I started picking it up more. And then when I knew I landed that backflip, I was flooring it. Thing was slipping. I was flying through the air, and that felt like the biggest air ever. Like, I felt like I wanted to eat some Doritos and just hang out up there for a couple seconds. But IOGO wins, man. To win racing and to win freestyle, we got to stay up there with Tom. He's so consistent. That's why he's a professor. But we're going to keep applying pressure on him and hopefully get this championship sealed up. Making moves. So Todd Ledoux getting 12 points as we take a look at our final BKT overall event leaderboard here in Detroit. Tom Mentz, Max D with 33 points. Bryce Kenny with 29. Todd LaDuke with 27. Covenar with 27. And John Gordon, Bad Company with 25. So at the end of the night when the dust clears, it's all about the 12-time World Finals champion. And Leslie Mears is on the track with her overall event champion, Tom Mintz. So much consistency for you tonight, Tom, and really paying off. You know, I was worried about your early run in freestyle. Were you? I, I really wasn't. You know, I thought no matter what, I'm just going for it. I'm going to have fun. I'm going big. I'm going to grab tricks wherever I can. I went for the backflip a little early on purpose. I thought, let's put some heat on these guys. It worked out well. I don't think I could have done a better job, really. It's, the run was exactly where I wanted it to be. And it was what he needed, guys, to seal the deal. Thank you, Leslie. So a lot to digest here. Adam Anderson with another off night with the truck. Todd LaDuke wins two competitions. But at the end of the event, Tom Mentz gets it done again. And he's doing just enough, Colt, to keep that lead. You know, that's what it takes on a tour like this is just to be consistent. And Tom Mentz is doing that, and it's paying off for him. And Tom now has a 16-point lead over Todd LaDuke. This series now takes a month off. They go into some arena events. Can Todd come back after that long of a layoff and make a run? Or is Tom Mentz going to World Finals? Oh, definitely. It's great for the drivers. They're going to get a little bit of break. I know they're going to go into arenas, but they have some time to figure out some issues. They're going to come back strong as ever and gain some valuable points. That will do it for us in Detroit as we leave the cold weather behind us and head back to the warmth of the Sunshine State for two rounds in Miami with Stadium Championship Series Yellow. For Colt Stevens and Leslie Mears, I'm Scott Jordan. Good night, and we'll see you next time on Monster Jam.